for providing this meal. So welcome, welcome leaders of Calhoun County. If you're from a county other than Calhoun, hold your hand up. Hold it high. Hold it high. That's good. That's great. So this is welcome to this event, and if I'm not, if you can hear, we're we'll trying to keep it quiet. This is a big room and it echoes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. If it gets bad, we've got two sound guys here trying to help us out. So, welcome to the event where energy is as electric as the quickly approaching election in just about 70 days. And the energy in this room is not manufactured, it's real, isn't it? Yeah. So this is our chance to recharge, connect, and to practice our persuasive skills over a pina colada or two. How many of you have one of Casey's pina coladas? Let's give her a hand. So we're here basically to rally, to relax, and to simply enjoy some well-deserved fun. And this is the place that you'll go away inspired, we hope, and energized. My name is Sheila Gilbert, and I've been involved in politics for over 50 years. My dad did it to me. <laughs> Any of you others in here have a dad that influenced you? See that look? Oh, look. What does that tell these fathers out there? That We watched in front of an old black and white Hoffman television, the Democratic conventions. We didn't miss them. I was intensely interested. My dad was kind of like Tim Walls an old country cotton farmer, just a good old gentleman. He would be very proud to be here today. His name was Joe DeGan, and I'm so proud as Sheila DeGan Gilbert to stand here. I feel like he's watching me. He trained me. <laughs> so on behalf of the Calhoun County Democrats, on this wonderful occasion where hope, H-O-P-E in great big letters, hope is a comeback. We want all of you to join us if you're in the Calhoun County area and you haven't found a home for your political place. We've got a headquarters right up the street on Noble Street. Join us every third Thursday we meet. We have a potluck, we talk about good things. Join us. We do some postcard working up there too. We don't just stay right here in Calhoun County. We're well aware that John Tester in Montana, a senator, is involved in a heavily com com competitive race, John Tanner in Montana. He's one of those key senators, and you know, if we don't keep the Senate and the House as Democrats, we don't have much of a chance of getting laws passed. We write uh, postcards to Arizona for Mark Kelly and for Ruben Gallego. They're in tough races. We send postcards to Sheriff Ohio supporting Sherrod Brown. Do you remember when Schwazi up in New York recently, do you remember when George Santos stepped aside when they had a special election? Well, a guy named Schwazi ran in that special election and lo and behold, he won big time. When he was making his acceptance speech that night, he thanked all of these people and then he said, and thank you to all the postcard writers. Now, we know good and well that when we do postcards and send them to these other states, it might not make a difference, but then again, it just might. So we have somebody among us that has written, Joanne, Gr Joanne Griffin, how many postcards have you written? Joanne, how many postcards have you written? 600? 600. She's written those. Let's give her a hand. Jack Plum. Jack was in here a while ago. Jack also, right there he is. Jack, that's postcards galore. Let's thank Jack too. So in the words of Michelle Obama, she said, do something, do something, do something. So we're trying to do what we can. And so we'll recognize some people right up front. Do we have a very young girl that was coming today, a very young 11-year-old granddaughter? She didn't show up. We were going to give a prize for the youngest. Yes, come here, Bert, come here. Look at Morgan. How old are you? Eleven. Look at Morgan. 
she's 11. Let's get her on here. Do you like Kamala Harris? You like Kamala Harris? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, we wanted to, is there anybody here younger than 11? Now let's do, hey, let's try to do this. Let's try the oldest. Is anybody here over, let's say 90? Anybody here 90 or over? Anybody here 90 or over? Okay. Let's say, okay, let's, let's take it a step further. Is anybody here 90, 91? Hold hand up, 91? 92? 93? 94? Georgia Calhoun, all decked out in her pearls, her green color. Let's get, we have a little one. We have a little prize for our winning young lady, and it says Chucks and Pearls. And we have a wonderful pair of pink and green earrings for Georgia. Oh. So Morgan, we hope you stay involved in politics and we may see you one day in place of Kamala Harris. That would be nice. So what a beautiful crowd you are. You're wonderfully, powerfully inspiring women. I know you are. You would not have noticed this event and you wouldn't have been excited. You wouldn't have been here if you weren't powerful and you have a following of your own. That's wonderful. And you don't you probably won't say, oh not I. Let me tell you, as I say, sometimes you're the only Bible somebody reads. Right now you are the only political person that somebody's going to be reading. So I'm glad you're here and you're that testimony. So let's be honest, if the world ran on women's efficiency, we would have all peace. We would have clean kitchens, and we would have no missing socks. <laughs> but today, it's about having fun, making connections, celebrating the nomination of Kamala Harris, and showing everybody how we women manage to lead. We do it with style, we do it with grace, and we do it with a little bit of sass. <laughs> so today, Beverly Williams, where's Beverly? She does, where's Beverly, Beverly, Beverly? Stand up, Beverly, let's give her a hand. <laughs> Beverly, I call Beverly, she's up at the headquarters, I call Beverly, she's the director of everything. <clears throat> With an emphasis on communications and that wonderful newsletter. Where's Carsey? Where's Carsey? Carsey, where are you? Carsey's right up there, <clears throat> she's talking. She's the director of everything, and she's an emphasis on operations and making sure. Look at that place setting that you have. That's the that's person organized that. So to our greeters, our registration desk workers, our decorators, all of you, thank you for doing that, and thank you for coming here. You had the message to bring some gently used tennis shoes. For those of you that did that, we have a Sylvia Cashin. Sylvia, where are you? Sylvia, where? Oh, right there in front of me, sorry. Sylvia is on, she volunteers with something in Anderson called Interfaith Ministries. And she tells us that one of the things that they need the most is tennis shoes. So for those of you that brought gently used tennis shoes, they'll go straight to the Interfaith Ministries. Okay. So as Michelle Obama so eloquently said Wednesday, there's something magical in the air. Don't you agree? I don't know how you can define it, but all these many years that I've had my hands in political work, I've never ever experienced anything like it is now. And it is truly magical. So a couple of weeks ago, I had this call from somebody named Susan, Suzanne Batchelor, and she said, Sheila, I think we need to do an event, and I think we need to call it Chucks and Pearls. I thought, well, I don't I know. I had to go Google Chucks. <laughs> I didn't know if we wanted to do Chucks or not. So anyway, I said, yeah, let me, let me talk to the group. Oh yeah, it 
was a good idea and we did it. And so that was a good thing for Suzanne, we did it. So where are you, Suzanne? Stand up. <laughs> you know, somebody has to think of something. And I was so glad you did that. Thank you, Suzanne. So in further honor of Kamala Harris, a member of the oldest and the most prestigious black sorority for black women is called AKA Alpha Kappa Alpha. Their colors are what? Pink and green. Pink and green. So we did the balloon arch for you in pink and green. We've used a lot of the decorations to do that, so we hope you'll take a photo in the middle of that before you leave. And we've got a little sign right here that says, we'll let you hold this sign that says Chucks and Pearls. Let's talk Chucks for just a minute. We said that, we mentioned that somebody might want to decorate their Chucks. Hold up your hand if you came with decorated chucks. Okay, come up here, come up here. We're gonna look at them. Line up, let's, see, let's let you line up right here. How many do we have? How many of you wanna be in the contest? Oh, come on, she decorated your chucks. Okay, we're gonna give you a number. Come on up here. Okay, here. Page have one. Okay, you can have two. You can have three. You be four. You be five, Becky. You be six. Then you be seven. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let these ladies just circulate. Y'all just kind of go around this way, and I want all of you just to look and see. They'll have their number like this. And so all of you just sort of say, well, I kind of like five, I kind of like four. Then they're going to come back up here and they're going to turn around like this. And they're going to hold their numbers up. And we're going to hold our hands up. And that's where we'll let Beverly and Carson come up here and count. We'll see who wins this wonderful door prize. Okay, so y'all take off. Go all around. All of y'all get your shoes going. Look at your shoes. Look at the shoes. Look at the pearls. Beverly. We've got a good first place. Y'all keep looking. Y'all look at the shoes. Look at them. Look at them. Okay. Can y'all? Okay. Look at the shoes. Look at their nose. Can everybody hear me? What an amazing experience, and I truly want to thank everyone who supported me to be your delegate. It was an amazing experience. And I know we're supposed to wear pink and green, but I am wearing the t-shirt that Terry Sewell gave the delegation during roll call when I was proud to help be part of nominating Kamala Harris for our next president. I have so many things to share about the feelings in that room and to be in the presence of presidents, to hear Michelle, to hear Hillary, to meet these people and see the energy and the joy and to look from our seats and see the diversity and the beauty of our party was so inspiring and amazing and wonderful. We had long days. It started at seven and it usually ended about one o'clock in the morning. So I'm a little tired. At our breakfast, we had some amazing speakers, Amy Klobuchar, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and Jasmine Crock. And those are just a few, every day. It was an amazing, I was so proud to be part of this delegation. And I have lots of stories to tell, but I have something much more important to say. 73 days from now we vote. And we have a lot of work to do. And in Alabama, there's a lot of people who don't believe we can make a difference. Well, I want to tell you how we're going to make a difference. 
If you know anybody who is in Pennsylvania, who's in Michigan, who's in North Carolina or Texas, who's in Georgia or Florida, we need to reach out to them and we need to get them to the polls. We need to get them to vote to the, to the, <laughs> sorry, not to the polls. We can't trust the polls. We can't stop working. And Alabama has a long journey. We have to start from red to purple to blue like Georgia did. And it is going to take work. But you know what we can do? Voter turnout has been abysmal in this state for both parties. The Republicans are comfortable and they believe that they know they're going to win every election. So we need to vote. We need to start showing our growing power in this state. We need to take every person we can take to go register and vote and start showing and claiming our power because we are not a party of hate. We are a party of joy. And if you could have felt the joy that I felt in the convention center, you would be as tired as I am and so ready to work because I am so ready to work. So please, please do your part because you don't want to be there on November 6th saying, I wish I had done more. We're going to be celebrating that I worked hard for 73 days and I made a difference. And like Tim Wall said, we can sleep when we're dead. <laughs> so if you want to hear more about the fun parts and the people we met and that start, please come to our women's luncheon next month. Next month, we have wonderful speakers coming. Marilyn Lands, who I hung out with a lot, is going to be coming and speaking to us. And we'll talk about all the parties and the food and the speakers and the joy. But right now, I'm asking, I'm challenging each one of you Make a difference, work with us, work together. We need to vote, we need to show our power, we need to help Alabama move forward, and I believe in my heart that we can do that. So thank you for supporting me, thank you for supporting the Democrats, and let's do this together. Sierra Smith was also one of the delegates. Sierra didn't, hadn't she shown up? Not, she thought she had a 1045 that she had to go to. But it was nice to have both representations there. So we were lucky to get two delegates from Calhoun County. So, um, bringing this excitement now down to Calhoun County, our first speaker is someone born and raised in Addison, Alabama. This young lady had no inkling of where her life would lead her when she left her home in Florida and went to Florida A&M University. In the process of transforming from the girl to the woman, she found herself even more keenly aware of the injustices and inequality and became an active participant in the civil rights movement. Her involvement in demonstrations and protests led to arrests and the terror of interrogations but her liberated mind wasn't to be silenced, and after graduation, Trudy began to teach in the South. Following many changes and locations in her life always led her to advocate for the poor and the underprivileged. As a civil rights advocate, teacher, counselor, international and national traveler, Trudy Mudford has squeezed two or three lifetimes into one, and she's only just begun. I first saw Trudy when we had an event up at the headquarters for John Lewis. And Trudy stepped up to the mic and just gave a speech like we've heard no other. We're going to share that kind of speech today. So Trudy Munford, could I ask you to come and bring a message? And let's give a warm welcome to Trudy Munford. I tell you, I'm trying to figure out the whole time I've been sitting over there how I'm going to use this microphone because I really do want you to hear me. And I would like to also add, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Sheila called me on the phone and she said to me, I want you to be a part of this program. And I said, you do? She said, but I want you to know now, there is no air condition. She told me, she said, the acoustics, not too great. She said, but we will give you something to eat. <laughs> and then she went on to tell me I had 15 minutes 
she said, so we want you to get it done in 15 minutes. And then I told her, I'm Afrocentric. <laughs> and not only am I Afrocentric, I am Black Baptist uh, a member. So you know that in itself means then that we'll go to church on Sunday and we won't end until Friday. And she gave me 15 minutes. <laughs> Okay, but on the other hand, uh, one of the things I'd like to say is, let's put Steph, I want to use Steph Curry. We want to put Donald Trump to what? Sleep. We want him gone. So we want to put him to sleep like Steph did in the Olympics when he shot that ball. Did he put him to sleep? We want to put to sleep. Aniston, we're not going back. We're not going back. Calhoun County, we're not going back. Anywhere else, we're not going back. Alabama, we're not going back. And I'm not going back. Now what I mean by that? We want our freedom to vote, all of us. We want freedom, reproductive rights. We want freedom to love who we love. And we want freedom for the LBGTXYZ community. <laughs> We want freedom to drink safe water. We want freedom for public education. And we want to read any book that's on the market. So we don't want to ban books. We want to ban assault weapons. That's what we want. children going to school and not reading Toni Morris. I can't even believe that. One of the best and prolific writers that we've ever had in the world. So we're not doing that. I want to also say, and I'm going to keep it short, Michelle above, and you heard the young lady that went to the uh, convention who came out, and she gave us a directive, and she said do something. And so we need to do something. One of the things I like what she said, it's, and Sheila too, we can register people to vote. We can go around and talk to our people and say, fellas, explain that you may have it, but let's just go investigate to see if you qualify. That's our responsibility. And so we need to make sure we must, in Alabama, we must grow our votes like Georgia did. We gotta grow. You know, just because it's red today, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't be purple tomorrow. Georgia was red. North Carolina was red. And let me tell you what, Mississippi is red, but Mississippi is going purple. Keep your eye on these things. And we can do the same in Alabama. I have high hopes for the state of Alabama. I mean high hopes. It has everything. This state has everything. It's got the Civil Rights Trail. People are coming from all over the world. Right here to Anniston, Alabama. Birmingham. Montgomery. We have something here. Hey, it started here, and guess what? It's going to end here. It's going to be for all of us. And you can see that. You can see it today. So I want to say to you that we can turn this thing around. We can start today. And we can turn it around. We can go out and encourage find them. You know, sometimes we always think they want to come to us, but we may have to go to them, wherever that is. 
but we can do this. And many times, you think, when you're in the state of Alabama, that you don't have hope. I have, I have hope like you don't believe. Because I have seen changes. When I was a kid, this same press, I used to come here and shop, 30 or 40 years, 50, 60 years ago. And they had a color and white fountain in this field. And today, we are here together. And what we need to do is to keep this and make it a habit to love each other, to encourage, especially women, because we are the change makers. You watch it now. If Kamala gets in there, she knows table kitchen issues. She knows how much eggs are in the supermarket. She knows these things. Now, of course, our women have had role models with white males. So they emulate sometimes their leadership by that role model. But women, like I see in here today, we work for issues. We don't work for power and wealth, but women work for issues. So I'm going to encourage all of us to not talk it, but put a little action behind it. Get out there and do something. Like Michelle gave the other night. Do something. America, you never feel the might of this country until you're out of the country. Or when you go to Washington, D.C. You ever go to Washington and look like the building's just, I don't know, it's just overpowering or something. But when you're out of the country, that's the same thing. The minute you go out of the country, they'll say, when anything happens, Make sure you get to the American Embassy, especially when you're on the continent or in a country in Africa. So whatever happens. So the first thing we would do when we were traveling was to make sure we located where the American Embassy was. Because you could be out walking around, not like in our country, and all of a sudden, they'll have a curfew. You say, what? Remember, I'm an American. So we don't get curfews in five minutes. So they said, make sure you know where the American Embassy is. I want to also say, being in Anniston, this place has taken me all over the world. I have talked about Anniston everywhere I have gone. When I first left here many years ago, I went to a place called Buffalo, New York. I never acclimated to the weather, so don't even bother. I am a sun person. So I didn't acclimate to the weather. But I took Aniston with me. People would say, well, where are you from? Aniston, where is that? And then all one has to say is the burning bus. And guess what? They knew where Aniston was. So this place has so much potential. It has so much to offer. And I think we in this room today, and many others, we're here to make it happen. So I'm going to give you the same directive. Remember, Sheila told me to keep it to 15 minutes. I'm going to give you a directive. Do something. Do something to help us get where we need to be. With a woman, I never in my life would have dreamed. I thought Obama was enough as the president. And I kind of got over that. And you know the backlash that happened after that. But here we come now. I said, oh no. A black, an Indian, where can this happen? Only way in America. Nobody. It can't happen in this place. So here we are again. Here we are ready for another challenge. And I see all of you get out there and let's do something. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you for your good, good words. I see Manuela Burton circulating among the group. Where's Manuela? Manuela. Where'd she go? 
She's going to, where? There you are, Manuela, look back there, see Manuela. She's running for the Calhoun County Board of Education, and I think she's been passing out cards for you, so Manuela is going to do something. Thank you. Thank you, Trudy, that was a good, good, good message, and, uh, and we're gonna try to do what Michelle Obama said, and we're gonna try to do something. Our next speaker is no stranger to Alabama. She had the prestigious honor of serving as the First Lady of Alabama as the wife of Governor Jim Folsom Jr. from 1993 to 1995. If any of you have ever heard Jim talk, he has this wonderful Southern accent. It's wonderful. I'm sure that he would say behind every good governor, there's a woman. And she's here today. So, Marcia, thank you for serving Alabama in such a wonderful way that always made all of us proud. When serving as First Lady, she launched the first governor's office for children and families, which had children for children and families, and it's grown to be 14 operational agencies over the state. She did many other great things while serving in the capacity of First Lady. And after leaving that office, she didn't just stop. She's kept working and she embarked on a very ambitious business venture as the head of something called Resources Fiber LLC, a company devoted to growing and processing bamboo for flooring and other products. The idea that she shares with her partners is to grow bamboo in Alabama establish a new crop for farmers and reducing the amount that is imported for processing. She was responsible for leading a 35-member sales force of the women's apparel label called Doncaster, and she achieved million-dollar roundtable status for two consecutive years. Marsha was the Democratic nominee for Congress from Alabama's 4th Congressional District. She was the first woman in the state to raise a million dollars for a political campaign she was elected to represent the state of Alabama at three Democratic National Conventions. So Marcia sits on all kinds of boards. She's from Coleman, and she has kept working and doing so many good things for the county of for, for Coleman. So let's welcome Marcia, the ex uh, former First Lady of Alabama, and a good friend, Marcia Folsom. Thank you. I want to fill in a couple of gaps, too, while I'm here in my background. I also was the executive director of the Alabama Democratic Party and for two years. And the reason that I wanted to do that and I was asked to do that is because of my experience in running for Congress. Because I understood and I learned quite quickly the value of grassroots organizing. And that's what we've got to do in Alabama. We've got to turn that page because when I grew up, and I, my father had me on the campaign trail when I was five years old. He ran for the state legislature. And I would go with him to the rallies and to the, to the suppers. And, and one thing that he taught me, and I guess that's why I kind of turned towards business in my later years, is that when we would go and we would hand out cards at these, at these rallies, he would have me to go after the event was over and pick them up because if people put them on the floor or they drop them, he said, Marsha, that's money. That's money coming out of my pocket. So we got to keep that going. <laughs> but I learned so much at his knee because when he served in the legislature, they didn't have offices. Your office was wherever you were. Well, he was a farmer. Sheila, he was a cotton farmer. And so his office was the front porch of our house. And our, his constituents would come and sit on the front porch and talk about the issues that they cared most about. But he always let me sit. He said, now Marsha, if you'll be quiet and you'll listen, I'll let you sit out here and hear what folks are thinking about. And I learned at a very, very early age that if you are going to be a responsible, effective leader, you're going to listen. You're going to listen and you're going to understand and try to walk in those shoes. They may not always fit, but you can try to walk in other people's shoes. 
so that they will understand and you will understand and you'll grasp a knowledge of what is needed and how you put yourself on the path to service. So that's where I learned how to put myself on the path to service. And of course, I met this great guy. Of course, I grew up knowing him, but I never did really care about him. I'm three years younger than, than he was, and I was a good friend of, of one of his younger sisters. And lo and behold, when we both had graduated from college, and I was working in Tuscaloosa, and he was in Birmingham, and we arrived at Coleman, Alabama one weekend, and his sister just so happened to fix us up, and I married Jim Folsom. And I jumped into a very political family, but I also jumped into a, to a family that believed in public service. And so I have, I'm really grounded and steeped into the purpose of public service. It's not about me. You know, Bill Clinton said, me, 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 about how, how Donald Trump likes to say, me, 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 you know, tuning up like the opera singer does. Well, that's... Public service is not ever about me. It's about we. And that's how we can be more effective. I have to say that I'm so proud to be with all of you here today. It's been a while since I've given a political speech. I told my husband when I was leaving the house, I said, you know, this is going to be fun. I haven't done this in such a long time. I am energized. Because you know why I'm energized? Is because we have a ticket to win. We have a ticket to win. You know, I really, I have to say, after I didn't get to go to the convention this time, I've been to seven in my, in my years, and this one I thoroughly enjoyed because I stayed up late at night and I would watch every speech. I couldn't believe that the enthusiasm, you could feel, couldn't you just feel the enthusiasm coming out of the television? I mean, it was just amazing, the energy. And the week after Kamala Harris was actually our president, Biden, asked her to be, or really said, anointed her, really passed the baton to her as our nominee. There was a, there was a phone call, there were many calls that week, and I participated in a call with women, white women for Kamala. And there were over 200,000 women. We broke the internet. <laughs> and raised $10 million. <laughs> but during that call, there was a, really, it was like what Michelle Obama said, do something. But one of the things that they said to do was first of all, is a, really a three-point plan, register people to vote, call people, and thirdly, do something. So I decided, you know, I'm going to do something. So I have formed a group called the Alabama K-Hive. Does everybody know why, why Kamala's fan base is called K-Hive? Back when she was running for U.S. Senate, she, her fan base started calling her the K-Hive. They call themselves the K-Hive. Kind of like Beyonce, the Beehive. So what we've done is we formed a group called the Alabama K-Hive, and we're going to swarm Georgia on the weekend of September 20 through the 22nd. And I have, I have a flyer here that tells you all about it, but the important thing is the reason I brought it, because I didn't bring enough for everybody, but there's, a, there's a, a code here that you can scan and you can register to go with us. We're going to have a bus that's going to leave from, from Birmingham, but if you would like to, to drive yourself, we're, we're we're getting together with the, the coordinated campaign in Georgia, and we, they are going to help us identify where we need to go. We're gonna, we're gonna hit the streets, we're gonna do phone banks, we're gonna do whatever they want us to do, because we're, we're gonna, they're gonna guide us. The, co the co campaign is going to guide us. So really what, I, what I'd like for you all to do is to consider if you can't come, we can connect you with the coordinated campaign that will provide you with those names, and I'm sure that Sheila's already done this because she's on the ball always. 
but the campaign will be happy to provide with any type of phone banking information you need, because you can do phone banking from anywhere. Nowadays, you've got a cell phone, you can do a phone bank right there. So just understand that there are ways that you can be involved. If you can't go somewhere, you can do something while you are at home. And so that's, I'd love for many of you to join us, but at the same time, I don't think that you have to come with us to, on that one weekend, because I'm not gonna stop there. We're gonna, there's some of us that wanna go on to North Carolina. There's some of us that are gonna wanna go into more, into more other, air, into other areas of Georgia. But this is a start. This is the way to open things up and let people know that Alabama women care about this country and that Alabama women can make a difference. Yes, we need to make a difference right here at home, but we need to get the, the confidence that we have and the energy that we have to put it right here at home. Because you know, quite frankly, when I was growing up, you know, everybody was a Democrat. <laughs> that, that was unheard of that you had, had Republicans around. I mean, my, my uh, unfortunately, my grandmother was, but uh, my dad became a Democrat because of Harry Truman. He was in World War II, my father was a veteran, and he became a Democrat because of Harry Truman. And so he steeped in us an understanding of what democratic politics and being a Democrat was all about. You know, these are times that make us so proud. I can't tell you how many tears I have shed, mournful tears I have shed in years past. Remember how it felt to wake up the day after the election in 2016? I don't want to ever go there. It was two weeks I was in mourning. I, I even went, I, 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 you know, then there was the march, the women's march. Well, of course, I participated in that. My daughter went to Washington, my son marched in New Orleans, and I went to Austin, Texas. So we were, we were covering the bases on that day of that march, but th just crestfallen. I mean, and I remember I took my mother, my 84-year-old mother, to vote on, on that election in 2016. And she was so excited about the fact that she was going to vote for a woman to be president, a Democratic woman, Hillary Clinton, to be our president. She was crestfallen. She, as many of us were. And you know, I think that about my mother and father now looking down from their heavenly home, and they, can, they I'm sure they are so proud of what's going on and what's happening, because we have another opportunity. We, we have a second chance. And it's not just about electing a woman, but sure, you know, that sure does make me proud. <laughs> but also, I think that we need to also remember that we need to honor and we need to thank our President Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden is an honorable, honorable man. And I've had the fortune, I've had the fortune to, to meet him. And he is, he is such a charming and wonderful and you can just feel when he looks at you, he looks at you in the eye. You know, sometimes politicians will look over your shoulder to find the person that's coming, you know, coming next. That's not Joe Biden. He is sincere and he, and he, he loves to be in public service. And you know, consequently, he's been in public service for a long, long time. But I think that we need to honor him. We know that he chose Kamala Harris to be his running mate. And he knew and he had the confidence in her to be that running mate. And that tells a whole lot. These people who say, oh, well, she's not qualified. Well, heck yeah, she's qualified. She, she was, she's been vice president. She's been the last person in the room. When everybody else leaves the Oval Office and there's a big decision to be made, she's there, she's been there. And that's where he knew that he chose a, a person who was one heartbeat away, just one heartbeat away from the presidency. That's qualification enough, my friends. Now, not to pat myself on the back, but I must say when I first met Senator
Kamala Harris in 2019, I immediately signed on to her emerging campaign. I saw in her the grit, the determination, the smarts, and I wanted to be a part of all that. Well, at that time, it was not meant to be. But when she was selected to serve as Biden's vice president, I knew then that she would emerge as a solid partner, a solid partner in the administration. And I knew that she would serve all the people. As she said in her acceptance speech, when she served in the county prosecutor's office and she would go before a judge, she rose and said these five words, I'm Kamala Harris for the people. She has lived that for the people. She's now prepared to lead us from the experiences she gained in the courthouse to breaking that glass ceiling to the White House. She has a mission of bringing all Americans together and we and securing the freedoms that we all hold dear. She is the only candidate that truly represents democracy, freedom, and defending the rights of all Americans and our allies around the world. She is a force. Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are providing a new way forward, not only for our generation and all the people who are in this room, but think about what our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren can, can look at her as being a, a model for what public servanthood is all about. I remember in 20, 2016 also that we all went into that election thinking that we were going to win. And we cannot be complacent. You know, one of the things I was listening to um, on my drive over, and someone was saying in a very critical kind of way, well, you know, that convention, everybody acted like they already had already won, as opposed to being energized to go back home and do something. Well, I didn't take that that way at all, did you? Those of you who were at the convention, you didn't feel that way. You felt like that you gotta get home and do something. Because we can't rest, we can't rest, we can't rest, we can't rest. You know, the, the um, thing that I, I mean, I, I, I struggle with even saying his name. I usually refer to him as the convicted felon, but... <laughs> I remember my mother said that he was the worst president in, in history, and, and I took that seriously from her because she couldn't stand Richard Nixon. <laughs> She's correct. <laughs> she, was. she was correct on a lot of stuff. <laughs> but you know, I have to say, and, and this, it was before uh, the term feminist came around, but you know, my parents were feminists. They, I was the oldest child of three, I have two younger brothers, and there was, I was always told I could do anything. It didn't matter what, and if, if I decided to do it, and of course my mother always said if you told me no, that was like telling, waving a red flag in front of a bull, I was gonna try to find a way to go through it. But that's, that's part of, of that, that grit and that determination that we wanna see in our children. And when I grew up in, in rural Coleman County, um, I was taught that I was to respect all people, whatever their background or whatever their station in life. And you know, in that rural Coleman County area, that was not the norm. Somehow that song we learned in Sunday school, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. It wasn't exhibited by many of those in my community. I never understood that. It seemed kind of funny that you would go to church and you'd sing that song, and then, but you didn't live it once you got out of the church house. And you know, particularly when someone in our community chose to burn a cross in our yard. I was a very young child. It marked me, but it didn't, it didn't scare me. My father made fun of them. He thought it was funny. He said, look at them. He said, they're afraid. 
They, those are little people. And we're not going to be afraid. We're going to go forward. We're going to stand for what's right and what's right for everybody. So that's really how I was, I was taught. And in 1993, when my husband, as governor, took down the Confederate battle flag off the top of the state capitol, we were, all, we were subjected to all kinds of threats. People who, who har harbor hate and fear will do most anything. But you know, we didn't, it didn't stop us. The flag didn't go back up. And we are, from that, at that point in time, had that flag still been standing there when, when Mercedes was looking at Alabama, do you think that that company would have come to this state? Absolutely not. You know, I say that and I bring that up, not to garner any sympathy or anything like that, but I just want to illustrate the fact that here in Alabama, in, in 2024, we are still seeing the vestiges of racism exhibited every day by those who are supporting the convicted felon. <laughs> and I don't even want to get started with RFK Jr. Oh my gosh, can you believe that? You know, one of the, I thought this morning, it's funny, is one of the conventions that I uh, attended, he actually came to the Alabama breakfast and spoke <laughs> in support of Barack Obama. Now, you know, that brain worm really did a number on him. I have to feel sorry for him. I, I, I really do. But what a, but think about it, seriously. Think about what that stain is to the legacy of the Kennedy legacy. Just think about that. I, I do, I honestly do feel sorry for him. And, you know, the statistics are there, my friends. Today, the majority of white women and white men do not support the Democratic Party, both nationally and particularly in the state of Alabama. You know, the former president, the convicted felon, has given permission for racism to show its ugly head again and again and again. And why? For what purpose? Does hate, what does, what does that do? Does hate and meat spiritus, spiritedness do anything to uplift the people of this state, the people of our nation? Do the policies of exclusion benefit all Americans? What is there to fear from believing that all people are just looking for their own path forward and in doing so, creating a life and a purpose for themselves and for their families. In quoting from Kamala's speech on Thursday night, she reminded us that we must live up to the fact that we are a nation of immigrants. Had my grandfather, at the age of 14, not come from Sicily in 1903, I would not be here today. He left his small village, boarded a ship, and sailed to Ellis Island, and then followed his cousins to Birmingham, Alabama, where he worked in the steel mills. And he later opened a small little grocery store there in Birmingham. You know, others who came to our country came here by ship, but not on their own accord. They were shackled, and upon arrival, they, they were sold in the auction block a sin of which our nation has never recovered. Now, by electing Kamala Harris and Tim Walls as our president and vice president, we can move forward, learning from our past, but focusing on a new way forward, a new way forward that holds fast to the belief that anything is possible, that we are Americans and we can do anything. We can choose truth. We can choose honor, we can choose joy, and we can choose freedom. <laughs> Didn't you just love hearing Kamala talk about the um, advice and counsel, I would say, from her mother? 
<laughs> Did it remind you of your own mother's advice? You know, I know, I know, you know, hearing some of the things that she said, I know that her mother was from India, but it had to be from the southern part of India. <laughs> she just sounded like a southern mom to me. Because <laughs> when she told, when she said that her mother told her not to do anything half-assed, I burst out laughing. <laughs> You know, how many times did I hear that? And I'm sure many of you heard, heard that when you were growing up. But before I close, I must also say, I do love Governor Tim Walls. You've got to love the guy. Has he not been fantastic? He is an educator in the finest sense of the profession. He understands the importance of paying it forward and what do I mean about that? Well, I heard him in an interview say that it was better to spend state dollars on school buses and school lunches than have to later spend it on prison buses and meals for those in, who are incarcerated. And I know you heard in his acceptance speech when he stated, we made sure that every kid in our state gets breakfast and lunch every day. So while other states were banning books from their schools, we were banning hunger from ours. That is powerful. He gets it. He knows that for a small investment in children and families in the earliest stages, that there are great dividends in the future success of all people. In closing, I would like to leave you with these thoughts about our nominees, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. They both exhibit the finest attributes we should look for in people who we select to serve our nation. They are both strong, they are smart, they are hopeful, they are kind, and they are uniting. They are focused on building a better future for our nation through what I call the three F's. Faith, a faith that sustains them, and a faith that through their efforts, we as a people will have a better tomorrow. Fairness, a belief that all of us deserve a chance to rise and have the opportunity to thrive. And finally, freedom to be safe, to be secure, and to be free to make decisions that will build a stronger tomorrow for ourselves, for our communities, and for our nation. I thank you so much for, your, for asking me to be here today. I have enjoyed it so much. And I really pray that God continues to bless you and continues to bless our nation. Thank you. Very good. Uh, isn't it nice to have somebody bring a refreshing message to us? And Trudy, thank you. And Marsha, let's give another hand. So, Carsey, I think we had some door prizes, didn't we? Carsey, door prizes? Door prize? What about the ticket on the back? Is there anyone that doesn't have a ticket? Okay, bring them to me, please, and we'll see who gets our door prizes. While she's doing that, let me tell you, we've got these things up at our headquarters, and it's called the Voter's Guide. A lot of you have been asking, you know, what about absentee voting, and what about this, and what about that? It's just a really good little booklet of 2024, and, and she might want to look at that. There, we have plenty up there. We also have some Harris and Wall signs. Now, the one like this. ask Marsha, Trudy's already autographed it, but we're going to ask Marsha to autograph this, and then we're going to auction it off. And we'll see if any one of you wants to take a special Harris Wall sign and put someplace in your yard or something like that. Marsha, would you be willing to autograph this? All right. I won't mess it up. So uh, we're talking about all these different places that have to have Erie County, Pennsylvania. 
and Gwinnett County, Georgia. Those are two counties. If we don't win those, we probably don't win the presidential race. So if we get into the postcard thing and we want to send them to Pennsylvania, by all means, Marshall's really onto something by taking a group over to Georgia, either Columbus, Georgia, Gwinnett County. Those counties that are swing states are absolutely, totally critical for a presidential win. Here in Alabama, we don't really matter because we're going to do what we're doing. We're going to do the, we're going to make the a popular vote come up because you know that other guy, he doesn't like to win, lose a popular vote, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, thank you all. Here's the first prize we're going to do. All right, I'm calling Sheila on something. I think that we can turn Alabama purple this time. The Decatur Daily reported today that, and I left my glasses on the table, but that Kamala is ahead, she's 53.2% of the vote, according, against 48.75 for the convicted. <laughs> Don't you all? I mean, I really do. What? Okay, here's our first door prize. Uh, oh my goodness, it says Harris Walls. Who brought this? Michelle, did you bring this? Who did that? You brought this. Oh, Annie. Wonderful. Thank you, Annie Brunson. It's a good thing. Okay, here's the. Pardon? Look on the inside. Oh. Bring back side. Oh, oh. Bring back the joy. Wow. I think I already know. I'm just going to keep this. <laughs> okay, you got your tickets ready? All right, this one would be, and you just look at the last three numbers, 385. All right. Annie brought another one. So Annie brings good things. Thank you again, Annie. All right, the number on this one, let's do that number was close to that one. Here it is. It would be number 341. 341. Come on. Oh, great. Great, 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 great. And he has another one. This one? This one is what? Magnetic bumper sticker. Magnetic bumper sticker. Oh, wow. Wow. I'd like to win that one, too. Wait, I don't even have a ticket. Here we go. It would be 371. Uh-uh. Yeah, 371. Good. Oh, good. Come on, baby. I'm so impressed with all these decorated shoes that you all did. We ought to have a thrill. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I know. Annie, is this the same thing? Annie, is this a magnetic bumper sticker? Okay. Is it a Harris Walls? Harris Walls. Wow, you are on the ball. All right, here we go. This one would be... 332. 332. No? No? Okay, here's another one. Here it is, right here. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. Was that Georgia? Was that Georgia? Georgia? Yes. Good for you. Let's give Georgia a hand. No. 
another one. Annie, thank you again. What's in here, Annie? <laughs> All righty, here it is. It is 3.39. Great, come on. Yay. I love it when you have to you don't have to go through. Okay. Here's a nice little thing. Cute. This will be next. It's ready. Here's this one right here. 369. 369. 369. 369. Cliester, is that you? Okay. Cynthia, is that you? Another tote bag, which is a really neat little so, thing too. Nothing that I ordered for today came in, so I brought one of my other little <laughs> collections, so that you can be environmentally proper. Environmentally proper. So, a cute little tote bag. Thank you, Michelle, for bringing this. And the one that gets it is holding the ticket number three ninety two. Three ninety two. There we go. centerpiece on the table. Will you look on your chair and if there's a little dot on the back of your chair, you're the one that gets the centerpiece. Before you leave, that beautiful balloon arch, and we're going to take this that says Women for Kamala. We'll let you hold that with the photograph, and we'll have Gary here holding your camera for you if you want to have a picture made within that arch. Uh, secondly, uh, let's do what Tim Walt said. Y'all help me with this. I'm going to let you fill in the blank. Okay, this is Tim Walsh. Let me finish with this team. He says, Walsh to the fire crowd. It is the what quarter? It is the fourth quarter. We're down a field goal, but we're on offense, and we've got the. Let's do that again. We've got the. Exactly. We're driving down the field. So that's exactly what we're doing too. Uh, we hope you have had a wonderful time here. You've learned something. You've made some new friends. So let's, uh, if you have something you want to say, does anybody want to say something before we leave? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. No, I'm good. And thank you to our interpreter. Let's give her a hand too.
Okay, any of the Divine Nine who are here? Who's here with the Divine Nine this morning? Then you all, I think the car wants you to go to the back so y'all can get a great picture. Anybody that wants us to help you with photographs back here, we'll do it. All right, well, we are officially adjourned, and thank you for coming and stay in touch with us. And let's give ourselves one more round of applause.